So this is geared towards beginners, but no matter where you are in your journey, this is going to be uh, helpful to you. So let's go and get straight into it. This is going to be an IT for beginners course, but it, no matter where you are, like I said before, in your journey, it's going to be definitely helpful. So let's get straight into it. So if you never, ever, 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 ever seen me before, I'm Rob. I'm originally from Detroit. I'm a former U.S. Army staff sergeant, and now I help people get rewarding tech careers. Why should you listen to me? For one, uh, I'm a veteran. I fought for your freedom. I'm a former staff sergeant. I've taught over 15,000 people. I have 12 industry certifications. I have an MBA in information technology, and I'm just an all around good guy. So as far as um, the ITF plus, right? What is the ITF plus? So the ITF plus is a certification that is by a vendor called CompTIA. So CompTIA is the leader in the industry when it comes to tech and when it comes to tech certifications. So the CompTIA uh, ITF plus certification is an entry level certification. And it's a great certification for students that are kind of exploring a career in IT uh, people that want to switch to a career in IT, but I'm just not sure if uh, it's for them or if they don't feel like they have the, the basics and the fundamentals. Also, professionals in a non-technical role who just need to work with IT teams and want to transition into a more uh, tech role, right? So the last but not least, this is an awesome precursor for um, higher level certifications like A plus. So most of my students in a zero to IT hero program, they go through ITL plus and the pass rate for A plus usually shoots through the roof. So, um, the ITL plus has 75 questions. There's going to be multiple choice. You got 60 minutes to knock off those 75 questions. Now it's a maximum of 75 questions, right? It doesn't mean that you're going to get 75 questions, but a maximum of 75 questions. All right. So the uh, passing score is 650 out of 900. All of the comp T exams are always on a scale out of 900. So right now we're going to actually go into the actual practice questions, right? I want to get you guys into critical and analytical thinking so you will be you know well versed when it comes to knocking these questions out now this is going to be a really good a barometer a really good gauge for you to know exactly where you are right now i want you to put in the comments are you a beginner or are you mid-level or are you an expert if you are mid-level or an expert and you get any of these questions wrong you are a beginner okay if you get any of these questions wrong you are a beginner and this is going to prove that all right so just make sure um, at least that you get 80 percent of these right uh, if you get 10 or more wrong you really need to you know work and hone in on your skills this is just foundational stuff and i think a lot of times people when they think about fundamentals when they think about the basics they think about easy stuff but as complex as Texas, Texas, not Texas, goddammit, but the complex as heck is right now, um, the basics are a lot more complex than you would think they would be. OK. So we're going to be going through all of uh, the domains inside of uh, the ITL plus exam and uh, we're just going to be pulling questions uh, from each thing, right? So the first couple of questions are going to be super easy, and then we're going to ramp it up from there. Make sure that you are following along and answering the questions, taking notes, so on and so forth. So our first question, which of the following best describes the function of a CPU? A, it stores data permanently. B, connects a computer to the internet. C, executes instructions from programs. D, provides power to hardware. What do we think? So all of you guys should have picked, move this up here. All of you guys should have picked C, executes instructions from programs. So the CPU is just the brain. It is the most important part 
in uh, the computer and it does all the processing and executes instructions from software and performs calculations and manages processes. Next up, which numbering system is commonly used in computing and consists of zeros and ones? Is it A, decimal? Is it B, binary? Is it C, hexadecimal? Or is it D, octal? So for ones and zeros, ones and zeros, we're going to be talking about binary, right? So computers use a binary system and it's based on electric circuits operating two states, either on represented by one or off represented by zero. Which of the following best defines an IP address? A hardware identifier unique to each device a temporary address assigned by the OS, a numerical label assigned to devices in a network, a code used to encrypt data. So an IP address is a unique identifier that allows devices to communicate over the network. Now let's talk about infrastructure right we were talking about just regular terms and concepts now we're going to get into infrastructure what is the main function of ram in a computer is it storing files permanently is it running multiple programs at once is it connecting external devices or is it processing network requests what is the purpose of RAM. So the purpose of RAM is running multiple programs at once. So random access memory temporarily stores whatever you're working on, whatever you're doing on RAM, allowing you to access whatever you're doing quickly. Which cable type is commonly used to connect a computer to a wired network? Is it A, HDMI? B, USB, C, Ethernet, or D, SATA? So the answer to this is C, uh, whether it's CAT5 or CAT6, Ethernet cables provide network connections for faster and more stable internet connections. Now, and we're gonna do a few more questions like this, but if you are stumbling and fumbling on any of these questions, you definitely need to um, hone in on your skills. And then, like I said, if you're a beginner, uh, most likely you should know any of this. But if you had the a feeling that you were anything above that and you got any of these wrong, we got to knock you down a notch, man. All right. Uh, which type of software allows the operating system to communicate with hardware components? Is it A, application software, B, System software, C, device drivers, or D, firmware? What do we think? So you guys should already know that the answer for this is going to be C, device drivers. So device drivers are software programs that enable you to use devices with your software. It usually, or just it basically, it tells your computer, your laptop, whatever you use, and hey man, this is what I am, and this is how we work together. So if it's prayers or graphics cards or USB or peripherals. Which of the following file types is commonly used for document storage? Dot .exe, dot .mp3, dot .pdf, dot .jpg. So for this is definitely going to be C for PDF. So PDF is widely used for storing and sharing documents because it maintains formatting across devices. What is an algorithm in computer computing? Is it a computer virus, a processor set of rules to solve a problem, a programming language, a type of database? So algorithm in computing and just in general is just a step-by-step -step process for solving problems or performing tasks in computing. 